Okay, hi everybody. Uh, this is uh, Bob Thurman again. I'm having a bad hair week. <laughs> my, although my friend, my dear friend, Peter Sellers at UCLA, he, uh, he maintains a hairdo where it all goes straight up. And I kind of, since that's what the hair was doing, I, I, there's no oil in it, there's no nothing. I washed it. it. It lies down a little flatter when I just after I wash it, and then it gets like that. And I guess it's, I don't know, it's uh, expressing enthusiasm. So I'm going to leave it. Never mind. I know it's not very professorial, but I'm not a professor. I'm retired. So I can let my hair be a little crazy. Never mind. So what I'm say, I wanted to say now, briefly, to you guys, is that I'm having so much fun nowadays with my dear friend, uh, fairly recent friend, but dear already, Andrew Holacek, who has written some wonderful books about lucid dreaming, about death and dying, who's a great yogi, he's done a lot of meditating, but he also is very practical, he's done a lot of counseling, he's a kind of therapist, and he... He counsels people, especially toward end of life, about end of life issues, you know, like, I believe he may be also a hospice working person, which I also very much admire, although I think that's not his main thing. He's mainly a teacher, I think, of, he's a trainer, a teacher's trainer of hospice workers, as which is what more or less what I do. And um, I probably should get out there and do a hospice thing, but maybe I'm too chicken. I might be joining the hospice soon. In a way, so and, and I maybe I will, but we'll see. We'll see. I have some other projects I'm trying. I have to finish, and I don't have much time. However, we I've been having great fun teaching with him a series of talks, which we sort of over large thing is called death and the art of dying. And in a way, we're thinking of it as kind of building to a an art of dying um, symposium that we may try to do. We will definitely try to do from Menla, Menla Tibet House online um, sometime later this year or early next year. It's, it'll be maybe a hybrid, but it'll be online and some people in person if the COVID, if people are more cautious and careful about COVID and if therefore the worst of it, pa and they get injected and so on, and the worst of it passes, passes away. We get past this pandemic level. And, uh, and we're having one event coming up next weekend. I think starting Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where we're doing the second part of, well, when you when you use kind of the Bardo teachings, the between state teachings, of how to go to a good destiny, we do we use this the exoteric sort of what are called the pure lands or Buddha lands or what I like to call Buddha verses, so that you it's sort of sci-fi like you beam in in a Bardo. You're kind of like a being who's, in, who's a Star Trek adventurer who's beaming somewhere. <laughs> your, your being, your coarse body has dissolved, melted away and you've left it. And you're reduced to tiny shards and glitters of light. And you transmit yourself somewhere else. And the question is, how do you aim that? How do you, you know, they have a little bleep, bleep, bleep. And, they have in the transporter room in, this, in the Enterprise, they have a bleep, bleep, bleep thing that does and sends you over to here and to there to coordinates. But how do you send yourself to coordinates? Well, that's the art of dying. That's the Bardo teaching teaches us how to do that. And, and in a way, when we're not fully adept at doing that by being fully enlightened yet, you know, we're only somewhat aware of it, then the, there are enlightened beings who can help us and we gravitate toward them and in a way, it's not just a Buddhist thing. If you're a Christian, you get Jesus' help when you die, and or and some or some angels maybe if you're if Jesus is too busy with the many other people dying because people are dying every second, thousands of them, all over this billion, multi-billion person planet. Not to mention all the animals dying and various other kind of spirits being dying and being born. It's a really lively thing, the life and death process. It goes on and on. There's no nothing, by the way. One of the first lessons you have to learn is there's no way to be nothing. Uh, we are something, and if that's joyful, we shouldn't freak out about that. And we only want to be nothing when we're really tired and we want to be unconscious, or when we're in real big pain and we want to be anesthetized. But otherwise, we don't particularly want to, and uh, we don't have to, because we, we, you know, we can learn to live sensitively, 
painlessly, actually, if we really, really learn to want to understand our own reality and the reality of life and death. And so anyway, that's what Andrew and I work on. We have studied it. We have had some experiences a little bit about it. We've all died lots of times in the past, previous lives. So have you, according to that system of science, of, of mental science. And uh, we're, talking, we're talking about the more esoteric, sort of formally secret, sort of pure lands or mini pure lands or pocket pure lands that you can make get so you can learn to have make those your coordinates that you beam yourself up to and then we're going to build and we're bringing in people from other traditions and uh, some rabbis some ministers some husband workers some nurses some doctors some meditation teachers we're going to we used to do these with the open center i still participate with them actually i'm doing one with the uh, the afterlifeconference.com uh, people who are, have done long, lots of uh, arts of dying, or arts of dealing with the afterlife issue, and they're very much into shamanic things, and we will work with shamanic people uh, and, as well in this big, we'll do it. we used to do like big conferences with hundreds and hundreds of people, it was really fun. And we had people like who had died and then returned and then had near-death experience, uh, experiences to share, and we want to do that again. Of course, it's happening all over the country, all over the world, these kind of things, and we'll just be part of it, okay? But in a way, Book of the Dead, especially from the, t the wonderful Tibetan, Indian and Tibetan mental science, is especially useful in this context, and we'll be using that, and we'll be talking about that, of course. So that's what, that's what I want to do, promote. There's a new special deal from Tibet House Menla Online, or as we put it, Thus Menla Online. <laughs> you can go to Thus through... Thusness through Menla, that means Tibet House US, that's thus. So thus Menla online. And um, you're invited and please join. And um, go to the conference in the afterlifeconference.com as well. And because you know, this is what is amazing. The main point is the more you understand about death and the, and the more aware you are of your own impending death, may it be 100 years from now minimally, the more you enjoy your life and the longer your life can be. I'll never forget Stephen Levine, the late Stephen Levine, who lived to a ripe old age, helping lots of people go through the death, the death crisis. And he said that among terminally ill people, the ones who had miraculous recoveries that he knew and his thousands of them that he dealt with because it was his profession helping them. He was one of the early pioneers of the hospice movement. The ones who did come up occasionally with miraculous recoveries completely unexpectedly were actually the ones who became so open-hearted and so accepting of letting go into the bright light of death, clear light of death, that they somehow... That letting go allowed their immune system to heal them, their bodies, and they then live longer. So ironically, if you, if you live dying into each moment in a certain way by being open to the new and the fresh and the, and the beautiful in the moment, then you let live more vividly and better. So that's the real point of it. it the point of it you know, is not just so you can die sooner or something, because you don't want to do that, because human, the human, your sensitive, beautiful, wonderful human body and brain and central nervous system is a miraculous evolutionary achievement that you have acquired, and you should use it to the fullest. And, but, and learning about how it goes and how you beam yourself beyond it into another better, even better life, that's part, part of living this one really well. That's a key part of it, okay? So that's that's my plug. And we're offering a special deal, and that's and please take advantage of it and look it up on menlaw.org or tibethouseus.org or whatever, whatever. Is that correct? Or my friend will also put something after the, after the plug, okay? Thank you. All the best. See you. See you in the bardo. <laughs>